Well, welcome to this unusual video and we're going to be talking about science and uh, evolution. And I'm delighted to be joined by Professor Robert Clancy, who's actually invited us to his wonderful country of Australia. And I'm going to put my sunglasses on because it's incredibly bright here. <laughs> Robert, thank you for your hospitality and for inviting us. Oh, it's, it's, unique been, opportunity. it's been good. It beats uh, talking about COVID all day, doesn't <laughs> it? It does indeed. Now, we're on a rather unique trail. So what is this trail and where mm. are we? We're on the Charles Darwin Walk and we're on it. Today is the opening of this new Charles Darwin Walk. And it's called Charles Darwin Walk because in 1836, when Darwin was doing his around the world trip with Fitzroy on the uh, Beagle, they stopped in Sydney for just under three weeks. And while the ship was being uh, repaired and revitalized, uh, Darwin smartly decided after being open only for about 18 years, he would cross the mountains. And in those days, there was a sort of halfway stop called Weatherboard, which we now know as Wentworth Falls, where we are today. And he was staying at Weatherboard, and they said, look, we've got to follow this, this creek. So uh, I'm sure you can see, I hope you can see the, the creek. We're on the walk that runs down beside the creek. And at the end of that creek, there's this massive waterfall uh, and it's a dramatic fall which surprised and impressed Darwin and actually led to some of the ideas that he later incorporated in his theory of evolution. So 1836. 1836. Voyage on the Beagle, really quite famous. Yeah. And it really is a beautiful spot. And to think that Darwin himself walked down here, it's, uh, it's, 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 it is a nice feeling, isn't it? it it's, it's pretty special. Mm. I mean, what do you think Darwin got from this environment? How did it, it help his thinking? Well, it, it's pretty, pretty clear that the whole trip was impressive. Mm. It, it identified new ideas and allowed Darwin to start being proportional in the way he thought about science and humankind. And I, I think we see Darwin as possibly the last, certainly the greatest and the last of those, if you like, genetic scientists, naturalists. Mm, generic, he, yeah, a bit of everything. A bit of everything. Yeah, yeah, he he yeah. was uh, complete. Uh, for example, when he uh, came uh, on this walk, at the end of the walk, he looked down at the fantastic uh, um, valley system mm. and he had been reading Lyle the geologist yeah. uh, who, who had really started principles getting of geology principles of mm. geology mm. by Lyle and Lyle had really perpetuated the idea of long time mm. a huge lengths of time Deep geological for geological time. Yeah. Uh, and Darwin incorporated that into biology mm. and he said if things change they can change over very long time periods mm. and he looked at the, uh, the erosion of where the creek goes over into a, a massive fall of a thousand feet or so uh, and said, this gully has been created, I think, by the water erosion over huge lengths of time. Mm. And it was that idea of time that, mm. that was very important in the evolutionary change between uh, species. And th I, I think that was the first thing that Darwin found. On the same trip, uh, a little further west of here, he stayed on a farm and saw a platypus. And uh, a platypus, uh, for those who uh, don't know what a platypus is, a very unusual um, mammal. It's a monotreme, it lays eggs, mm. uh, but it looks like nothing on earth. But he, he somehow said, well, uh, I guess it's the English otter or one of those sort of animals Which it, in England. It does look a bit like. Yeah, yeah, yeah a bit yeah. like already yeah. said. He, he actually said, can there be two gods or just one? And he started thinking, therefore, that maybe if the, I believe there's one God, yeah. um, that what's the difference? How do these change? Do these mm. animals come from some common denominator? And, and that was a very important part of his thinking. So the Blue Mountains, I think, offered Darwin, in context of the whole trip and the many other changes, you know, the, the, the finches on the Galapagos yeah. and so many of the yeah. other things that happened, uh, it offered this idea of perhaps uh, species changing mm -hmm. under one god. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's something about the grandeur of the Blue Mountains themselves. I think. Uh, I mean, they're just, they're just, uh, <laughs> the, 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 just the, the scale of the mountains, the, uh, the the hue of the mountains, the the whole atmosphere just makes you kind of think 
a little bit out of the box, if you like. It's just such an impressive... Well, we, uh, we, we get a little blasé because we live you know, an hour and a half drive from here. Yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah. but um, we, we, the, the wonderment never goes. Well, yeah. uh, we just love the opportunity of bringing friends like yourself, John, uh, to see our mountains. They're not the highest mountains in the world. No. Uh, but they certainly stop people mm. escaping Sydney. It took mm. 25 years for the, uh, the original uh, convicts and uh, the uh, soldiers, etc., that colonised in 1788. To get here. 25 years mm. to actually get across the mountains yeah. because the mountains here are very different to European mountains. Uh, in European mountains, you go along the valleys to get through them. Yeah. Here, you go through the valleys and you reach this precipitous cliffs that yeah. Darwin saw <laughs> yeah. when he got yeah. to the end of this yeah. walk. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah. um, so the, the, the amateurs followed Aboriginal trails that have been there for probably 40,000 years, just followed those and crossed in three weeks. So, but it mm. took them 25 years to, <laughs> yeah, to, to wake, up to, yeah. wake up to yeah. uh, the way to do it. Yeah. How do you rate Darwin as a systematic, methodical, logical scientist? Oh, I think Darwin was uh, one of a kind. Uh, he, he wasn't the first person to think of the idea of evolution. Mm. In fact, his uh, his grandfather, Wedgwood, Eras yeah. uh, no, no, Erasmus, oh, Erasmus Darwin, Erasmus Darwin, quite Darwin right. was, yeah. was very much uh, mm. along, on different lines. Mm -hmm. of, um, I think what Darwin did was that he spent a lot of time noticing detail. Yeah. He put together a, a wide-ranging number of observations. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and this is so sad these days mm. that science, I think, mm. is being somewhat distorted by yeah. a lack of people looking at basic observations and making deductions and then testing those, mm. uh, which is what science is all about. I mean, and science has to, be, has to be based on empiricism, doesn't it? Absolutely. What, what do we see in the real world? What works when we try it in the real world? And, and Darwin was so systematic and detailed. Yeah, yeah. Because there was another guy, Alfred Russell Wallace, uh, yeah, th but, thought of a similar theory a bit later than Very Darwin. smart guy yeah. uh, who was working as a bird catcher yeah. uh, up in the, uh, uh, the Spice Islands. Mm. Uh, he was, I mean, Darwin Darwin was a fairly wealthy person. Mm. You know, he, he had money in his family. He married the Wedge, you know, the Wedgwood family. Uh, whereas Wallace had basically nothing and mm. had to shoot birds and bring them back mm. to specimen uh, collectors. Specimen right? yeah. collections. Yeah. Uh, mm. But he noticed the same sorts of things that. Darwin noticed, particularly uh, on his trip across the Pacific. And it's interesting, isn't it, that both these people at the same time... Same, same British same Victorian British culture. Same British background and yeah, culture. Same way of um, thinking. Observing yeah. in the Asian Pacific region mm -hmm. uh, changes from island to island. I mean, there's the Wallace Line, for example, mm -hmm. which uh, runs uh, around the, the top of uh, the, the, the Moluccas, the Spice Islands, mm. uh, separating the... the um, separating uh, animals and birds <laughs> of the Asian from the Australian. And, and there's a definite change in, 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 the, in the wildlife at, on either sides of that line. Either side of that line. Yeah. And he noticed this. And uh, that's uh, representing the geological past with the tectonics right. and all that. And he, uh, the story's well known, he, mm. uh, the, the famous letter of Ternate, uh, which mm. is, mm. uh, Ternate's uh, one of the, uh, the key spice islands mm. in the Moluccas, mm. um, where um, uh, he was spending quite a lot of time and he wrote, uh, and uh, my wife and I, Christine, we, we actually went uh, to, because mind you, there's a different house every time you go there, which was Wallace's yeah, house where yeah, he wrote yeah. the, the famous letter. Yeah. But he wrote it to Darwin. Yeah. And I, I think th this is really important it because is. Darwin was a, an extraordinary humanist. He, he was a, an a, amazing man. Yeah. Uh, he could have screwed up that letter yeah. as many people so have. So Alfred inside. Russell Wallace wrote to Charles Darwin. So um, Alfred Russell Wallace is sitting there in the Spice Islands. Yeah. Da Darwin's at home. He could have ripped it up, gone to the Royal Society and said, this is my discovery. That's right. Not knowing but he Darwin didn't. had been thinking this yeah. for long periods of time, Wallace said, I think there may be some natural selection process in creating the changes that I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. Now, he he did not have the intensity of observation, yeah. the detailed support. Yeah, it was, but the idea it was, was it was more of a sort of harebrained idea without all the without yeah, all the detailed evidence yeah, behind it. I, I think Wallace was hair better is than hairbrained. Hairbrained is unfair. Yeah, yeah you're and right. the interesting thing is, instead of disposing of that little, putting it, he showed it to his friends, who were people like Hooker that was uh, running the, uh, mm. the uh, Kew Gardens at yeah. that time, uh, and... Um, the Royal Society. The Royal Society. And he his friends arranged for both, for, for the letter to be read at the same time as Darwin 
went through his detail at the same time. So it was a, essentially a Darwin, joint presentation. Even though Darwin, uh, Darwin got it more right, if you like, mm. than, than uh, did, did Wallace. Wallace mm. had the idea, he had several ideas that were quite different to Darwin, um, and it was a very brief, it was just a letter. Uh, there was not a lot of uh, data. And Wallace thought but that the, the species but the, 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 I, the idea was there. Yeah. yeah. The idea was, but Wallace had species changing yep. rather than the individual yeah. inter, independent uh, mm. evolution of a particular selection mm. of, of one or two birds or animals. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And what can science learn, scientists today who might be watching this video, who knows? What, what can they learn from Darwin's approach to the way that you handled that? competition the way the way that he he didn't take it as a, as a competition that he kind of synergized it yeah uh, well, he's I, worked together with wallace you, you should have given me some warning john that we we're going to do this <laughs> <laughs> i could have given it some thought well, well but I'll, I'll give you give you one answer um and that is the young scientists of today and, and as some of you may know i i've worked in science for all my working yeah, life yeah. um the young scientists of today looks at a particular he looks at something highly specific. It may be one enzyme in a complex uh, mm. cell, mm. Uh, maybe one atom in a whatever, mm. but uh, without looking at the big picture. And, and I, I think, you know, not that we're talking about COVID today, John, but in COVID, there's been so many errors mm. by people not trying mm. to understand what mm. they're seeing mm. in the context of the whole. Yeah. And, and what Darwin did is he looked at the very big picture and then narrowed down to look for examples. Mm -hmm. uh, the young scientists doing PhD today will do a PhD on a, a particular enzyme yeah. or a particular part of an enzyme yeah. Yeah. or just a you know, mm. an atom in an enzyme, mm. uh, and, and never really understand what the enzyme does. Yeah, yeah. And this is what happens. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah you need kind of this well, I this, think that was the big overview. thing about it. Yeah. And he was the end of that series. After that, uh, people started, we started seeing uh, uh, sophisticated science in terms of chemistry, physics, mm. um, you know, the latter part of the 1800s, early mm. 1900s. And what about the efficacy and, and the integrity of Darwin, that, that he didn't try to steal the limelight that he shared it with Wallace? That, well, I think that's the second really important yeah. thing that every scientist needs to, yeah. to know. Um, I was, uh, a friend of mine was showing me very recently that uh, um, journal, the number of articles in journals that have been uh, shown to be wrong, to mm. be fraudulent, mm. and have, I mean, it was hundreds, mm. hundreds, I It think. was, yeah, thousands, yeah. yeah. Thousands, yeah. yeah. And having to be withdrawn, not withdrawn, and that's the problem, I think, with many of the journals today. They're, they're becoming part of a narrative, uh, uh, and the, the wrong drivers are driving a science and inquiry. Mm. Uh, I think money value is being put on yeah. pretty much anything and everything, mm -hmm. which certainly was, well, might have been, Darwin didn't need to worry. Certainly. Yeah, he, he was fairly flush. Certainly, <laughs> yeah. Wallace, yeah. Wallace, yeah. Wallace, Wallace well, didn't Wallace mind did. a few dollars, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and Darwin's contribution to science overall, how would you rate that? Well, it's interesting. Darwin came before the Mendelian genetics mm. and, and, and then, of course, mm. chemical genetics. With his pea plants and his with, tall plants and his short yeah, plants. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's quite interesting that uh, that threw a bit of a spanner in the works. Uh, the idea that uh, evolution was pretty primitive, you know, it's just people running around seeing coloured finches and things mm. like that. Mm -hmm. And then genetics gave this pseudo precision. Uh, and it was actually his, I think it was his grandson or uh, Huxley um, yeah. uh, that, that yeah. came together and brought the genetic streams and the, uh, the classic observational evolutionary streams together, uh, I think from memory, in the, the 1930s. Yeah, so this is kind of the Neo-Darwinian genetic yeah, synthesis. Yeah, of course, there, there became a schism you know, where, where yeah, the yeah. people thought uh, maybe yeah. Darwin got it wrong. I mean, uh, there are a lot of things about um, the genetics of, of evolution or change that uh, are more complicated than the classic DNA, mm. Um, mm. Mendelian type genetics. Mm. Of course. Uh, we we know course. about mitochondrial thing, we know Partial about- Partial dominance uh, and all uh, these things. Well, we also know how the environment can change uh, DNA. Mm. Uh, and mm. so we can impose mm. things in the environment we don't mm. like and change our DNA mm. and that gets transmitted. And, and, and so the epigenetics. Epi epigenetics is, epigenet um, you know, it's quite interesting. I was talking to some friends who are very interested in in uh, the develop aspects of um, uh, of anthropology mm. in our, our Aboriginal population, mm -hmm. and they're f claiming to start finding epigenetic change due to various factors introduced to the environment by Europeans. Interesting. So you know, the, the, mm -hmm. this whole it's just a 
brand new area that mm. I, I don't know enough about. No, 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 no. Nor me. But it's interesting, we had this genetic stuff, which w was true, the Mendelian stuff. We had the Darwinian stuff, which was based on really good sound empiricism. Apparently contradictory, because the Mendelian stuff was either one or the other, it was either a tall or a short plant. And then later with Morgan, the work on Drosophila, yes. he either had some kind of eyes, some kind of eyes right. or, or not some exactly. kind of eyes. Yeah, it was a huge thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it, it, was, it was almost compartmentalised, almost quantized, yeah. And Darwin with this sort of linear progression thing, uh, with, with small changes. That's right. And over time, when we know more, we could synthesise these two apparently yeah. contradictory lines of science. That's together. right, and the genetics of course can allow for and enable deviations going back and forth, mm. which may be brought back into the fold by mm. selection. Uh, mm. And the selective pressures of course change with time, mm. don't they? So. So, so the lesson for me there is, if something has got empirical evidence, if it's true, then you've got to stick with it, even if it's apparently contradicting other things. Because as more knowledge comes along, these can be synthesized into a, a greater understanding of the, the created order. Oh, absolutely. So fascinating. We've learned quite a lot from the Darwin Trail that got us thinking about the life and times of Charles Darwin. He, he was there in Sydney, the ship was being revittled, and he seized the opportunity. He did. You know, he came up here to the hills, he saw the mountains, he looked at the real world round about him and he thought about it and he made deductions from, from that. He was challenged later on in life because someone else thought of the same idea at the same time and he handled that with great integrity. And he just put all these things together and although there was contradictions with uh, some genetic science, he later synthesized that all together in, into a whole and we, and we progress. And uh, have we got it all worked out now? Yeah, I, I, think, I think we're so lucky today that this yeah. is by chance the opening of the new Darwin yeah, track. Yeah, yeah. And anyone who can come to Sydney, it's an hour away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and you can walk the same steps that yeah. Darwin took and have the same yeah, yeah, thoughts yeah, yeah, and yeah. be impressed by the yeah. same changes. No, it's, it's been a real privileged day and thank you so much for showing us round and for bringing us here. It's just it's it's a, a marvellous place. Thank you, Robert. Yeah.